Welcome to Sriram IAS Academy in this An Academy platform. My name is Laila Ignatius. Today I am going to take a topic from PSIR in that paper 1, section B. Seventh chapter is regarding federation. In that federation, as per the syllabus, there is a changing nature of center and state. I am going to discuss. And due to the time limit in terms of demo, so I will handle only the center state financial relations in a particular manner, how the way the changing nature also came into existence. So this, this is the way only I am going to discuss about the concept regarding the center and state financial relationship. Okay. So when you are going to look into this idea of center state financial relationship, we know very well the way how the federal principles are existing inside our country for that we are having a union list and a state list and concurrent list. These are the traditional things. Maybe in your uh, GS paper, uh, your teachers might be taught you in polity classes, traditional things. Okay. But when I am going to look into this idea of uh, the center and state relationship into the nature of uh, the concept like federal principles, I already told the seventh schedule is clearly mentioning it that three lists are there, union list, state list and concurrent list. And union government can able to make on union list, state can able to make state list, both can able to make concurrent list. When there is a conflict in terms of union law between state law, in terms of concurrent list, only the central law, parliamentary things will be remain inside our country and the state law will be nullified. This is a normal procedure when I want to talk about the federal natures. So, in this manner only, we have to discuss about the center state relation in terms of legislative, administrative and financial. Due to, since it is a demo class, so I only plan to discuss about the center financial relationship. So, the way how the concept of the financial relation between center and state and related to this idea of financial relationship, I have to go back to the oldest way, the way how during 1870s, the financial decentralization came into existence. That was the first time, I think, during the period of Lord, uh, just a second, I will take the pen. Okay, during the time of Lord Ripon, or even before the, during the time of Lord Mayo, the financial decentralization is a kind of idea, exactly happened around the 1870s, under the period of Lord Mayo. And later around 1881, the financial decentralization in order to strengthen the mechanism of local self-government. In this manner, the way how the financial things related process came into existence to give more independent to the units, provincial and local. And later after 1919, the way how the transfer and reserve list came into existence. And apart from this, the most important concept of the Council of India Act 1935, Government of India Act 1935, first time discuss about the concept of federation. Okay, but in practicality, from the time of 1st April 1937, the Government of India Act 1935 came into existence. But until 1947, we never introduced the term federation very practically inside. And even after independence, we want to go for federal principles and federation. But if you can able to search the word federation throughout the entire constitution, you cannot be able to find in a single place the definition or the term federation. You won't, it never and ever exists inside our constitution. One side you keep it. But when I want to look into the center state relation, the way how union state and concurrent list and apart from this, a state like United States of America or Canadian methods, there the residuary power lies with the central government, federal government into the nature of Canada and residuary power lies with the state government as per uh, the places like United States of America. Like the way how Motilal Nehru committee around 1928 recommended for if you want to go for a federal principle, the miscellaneous power or the residuary power need to be remain with the state. These are all the preliminary aspect. So when I want to enter into the topic like a, a center state financial relation into the nature of uh, the conventional method, 
article 268 onwards the way how the various taxes and distribution of taxes came into exist and service taxes and the gst and all came into exist with the 101st constitutional amendment act based on that we can able to come for the conclusion these are the traditional method you can able to see starting from 68 68a 69 71 and 72 in traditional way in polity classes you might be studied in that but the most important thing when you are going to look into this idea of central state relationship financial relationship the very most important concept i can able to say by the way how the grantin aid which the first time appeared inside uh, the political scenario of british india after 1935 council of india came into exist to study about this act there was a committee in the name of otomore commission came into otomore commission came into exist okay neymar otomore commission based on the recommendation of otomore commission only first time the idea of grantin aid came into but after india's independence we tried to learn about the process of grantin aid but it is the most important instrumental activity to maintain central state relationship in terms of financial commission but not defined anywhere inside our indian constitution it was asked by upsc already in preliminary 1617 1718 that office of profit no more defined grantin aid no more defined inside our indian constitution so the way how the concept regarding grantin aid the changing nature of financial relations so when i want to discuss about the changing nature of financial relation in terms of optional perspective or in gs mains perspective here the matter is that when it was in 1951 the way how the prime minister of india who want to go for the methods of planning commission constitution has given a proper provision under article 280 of the indian constitution on the basis of that the central state relationship with financial and every relation will go in a smooth way very particularly the financial relation will go in smooth way but and simultaneously in 1951 under the executive leadership of the prime minister of india the jawagala nehru government created a planning commission and this also going to take care of the except regarding grantin aid and finance commission will also taking care of the central state relation in terms of granting aid there is a confusion happen after that so in this nature when i want to look into this idea of granting aid with the initiation of the constitutional provision i can able to divide the entire process even though the word granting aid nowhere defined in our indian constitution but there are some provision under article 275 which talks about the ideas of the legal grants or the statutory grants under article 282 the discretionary grant when i want to talk about the statutory grants it is a parliament is an ultimate body through the 75 article with the proper legal provisions can able to assist the various states inside our country and union territory and money need to be taken for this assistance from the expenditure charged part of the consolidated fund of india because consolidated fund will be classified into two way expenditure charged from consolidate expenditure made from consolidate and charged item only go for the parliamentary voting process only debate and discussion parliamentarian can able to hold but they cannot be able to vote but if expenditure made from consolidated fund of india parliament will debate discuss and finally it will go for voting there is some kind of limitation towards those parliamentary authority towards those funding so normally the important area will come under the expenditure charge from consolidated fund of india so in this manner the for the special purpose or the ordinary purpose general purpose people will use a concept regarding expenditure uh, into the nature of the statutory grant under 275 but when i am going to look into the idea of 282 discretionary power where the planning commission's activity will come into exist the way how the planning commission is as a body is going to provide advices to the constitutional methodologies on the basis of that the advices of the planning commission will come into force for the usage of the discretionary so on this matter when you are going to look into this idea of granting aid into the nature of discretionary grant it is not for not common purpose 
the central and state government can able to make grants for the special purpose that is the most important special purpose so based on that the concept came into exist in india after 1951 but when i am looking into the ideas of the finance commission and the planning commission finance commission and the planning commission okay the way how after 1950s the financial relation in terms of center and state came into exist in that part the very necessary point is that since 1951 the planning commission came and they usually give advices to the matters for discretionary grant between center and state and the parliament through the financial commissions and all the statutory grant can able to done to the state government and central government in this manner but in practicality the way how the entire process came into existence at the time it create lot of confusion so it was in 1959 the Nehru decided to divide this matter of expenditure expenditure in two way one is planned expenditure and non-planned expenditure non-planned expenditure and planned expenditure this is the way to avoid the confusion between uh, the financial commission and planning commission constitutional body and extra, extra constitutional body the government of india during the time decided to go into the methods of expenditure need to be classified into planned expenditure non-planned expenditure and planned expenditure on the recommendation of planning commission non-planned expenditure on the recommendation of finance commission will come into force so based on that somewhat the expenditure at the central level and the state level or center state relation will be properly managed into the nature of a planned ideas in the name of planning commission as an extra constitutional activity and non-planned expenditure under article 280 of the indian constitution with the help of finance commission came into to avoid some kind of overlapping function but this method was announced as an uh, outdated and updated one by the Moti government of 2014. when the government decided to merge this process of uh, uh expenditure or otherwise i can able to say the elimination of the process of non-constitutional body like planning commission came into exist from 2017 onwards for that purpose after the abolition of planning commission and induction of niti ayok the expenditure part of non plan and plan also again merged together since 2017 onwards so now onwards expenditure alone is going to happen with the help of the financial commission activities so this is the major change i can able to say from the time of 59 to 16 and 2017 onwards into the nature of expenditure part people can able to this is the most important thing this part not at asked by upsc either in prelims or gs part mains or in optional paper but general changing nature will come into force and people will discuss about the nature of planning commission and finance commission in a very general manner but now it become compulsion after 2017 the niti ayog as a think tank it is neither constitutional body nor extra constitutional body nor a, as a body niti ayog came as a think tank a advisory body on the basis of evidence and information methodology they are going to help people to give advices on the basis of the evidence they are going to provide before the government and uh, information they are going to produce before the government based on that they can able to go for analyzing the entire process and the um, government can able to take decision based on their own not the direction given by uh, like planning commission in the old time niti ayok never and never gave directions they only give suggestion by the way of evidence and information methodologies okay so in this nature the current trend in india current trend in our country in terms of center state financial relations are keep on happening and for that we are having a finance commission on the basis of the finance commission there are some kind of methods of finance commission also using in the name of vertical imbalances and horizontal imbalances the way how the fiscal imbalances are going to happen between the center and state will come under the category of vertical imbalances among the central department will come under the category of horizontal imbalances based on that now at present the financial relation between center and state is keep on happening this is one side 
there may be a possibility upsc if the question comes in 2017 after your answer should must be in this category of elimination of planned and non planned expenditure elimination of planning commission and the implementation of the constitutional body like finance commission based on that you can able to conclude one side but there is an another important perspective also came in TXS after 2020 and later part also the way how 100th first constitutional amendment act came in TXS it is regarding the constitutional amendment for implementation of goods and services tax okay so based on this proposal GST as a constitutional amendment came in TXS with the ratification of the both houses of the parliament with the amendment uh, happened inside the parliament with the assent of the president of india and finally more than 15 states also gave the ratification so 101st constitutional amendment act into the nature of gst came but gst happened inside the country but in what way the gst is going to impact upon center and state relationship that is an another most million dollar question generally people have in their mind so, when I want to look into the idea of GST and its impact upon central state relationship, I have to discuss about this nature. For example, the way how the GST is going to have some kind of conflict with it, the autonomous nature of the fiscal autonomy of every state. Because when I want to look into this idea of center and state, I need to discuss about the way how the GST is going to impact upon various states. The states we usually divide in three categories. The first one, the most industrialized state like uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, or in uh, Karnataka, or uh, Hyderabad and Telangana, and Maharashtra and Gujarat, these are all industrialized states. And uh, some states are popular into the nature of more agriculture like Punjab and Haryana, UP. Etc., etc., and some states are resourceful states like Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh and Bihar and other parts, some other areas. So, I can able to classify it in other way a resourceful states on one side, industrialized states on other side. Some states will be considered as a per state who utilize the resources as well as industry, like a parasites. We can able to say so in this nature. There may be a possibility that all states are going to return the GST money to the central government when the sharing of central to state is going to happen. Some states, the most industrialized state is giving more contribution to the GST collections or not getting the due benefit. And some agricultural state are the social state due to the proximity of central government and all will gain more popularity and more resources. Some states ruled by opposition have some kind of difficulty to access the dues of the GST collection and all. In this manner, some problems are erupting inside our country at present. So, when you want to look into this particular matter, in classes we can able to say how the way the center state financial relation after the two, uh, GST came into exist. The most important thing. Under Article 279 of the Indian Constitution at present, A subclass 1, the concept regarding center and state into the nature of financial relationship after the impact of GST. GST wants to bring the concept of one nation, one tax, no doubt in the world. For achieving this one nation, one tax only, the creation of GST council and center state relationship. So, central government can able to have one third decision making in GST council and the state government will have the remaining two third authority. The central will only one third and state will have two third and when I am going to look into this one third and two third, any decision the council is going to take with the help of three fourth majority under article, article 279 of the Indian constitution. Based on this provision. We can able to say outwardly, theoretically, that the states two-third, based on the three-fourth majority, they can able to bring. But only one-third, say, from the central side, cannot be able to bring three-fourth majority. So, state only will have domination in GST counts. And second important thing in central state relation, financial relation, after the impact of GST, 
the parliament and state have same power to make laws regarding uh, the process regarding taxation of goods and services in other area federal principle unionless union government stateless state government concurrent both can able to make law but when there is a conflict between central and state law central law only will prevail but into the nature of gst both central and the state have every power to make laws related to the taxation of gst and any dispute is going to arise in future regarding the issues regarding the settlement of gst council and the matter will be decided on the basis of consensus consensus not based on majority and parliament law cannot able to override the state law regarding gst council these are other most important things we can able to say in terms of the nature of central state financial relations impact after the introduction of gst even in central state relation normally the parliament law will override state law when the matter is regarding concurrent list but regarding gst parliament is not able to make laws to override the authority of state law and there is a most uniformity i can able to say not only unity it want one nation one tax the uniformity like the way how in us you may be a big state like california or you to washington or etc etc a small state like hawaii will have uniformity in the same manner in gst council every states are having equality of vote uttar pradesh one vote one value in sikkim one vote one value this is a way equality of states and will be achieved in the nature of the general state and finance relation after the impact of the gst and the most important when you are going to look into the provisions of article 279a9 it is talking about the importance of state decisions inside gst council and there is another amendment happened on after 101 246a sub clause so here the matter is regarding the nature the parliament is having exclusive power to make laws with respect to the matters of goods and services under the category of the supply of goods or services this is the most important thing or both it is regarding something regarding the manufacturing of goods and services or supply of goods and services or in both case regarding in the course of interstate trade and commerce and this is called as IG into the nature of interstate trade and commerce in the name of integrated GST where the parliament only have the ultimate authority related to the matters and disputes regarding interstate trade and commerce under article 246 a sub plus 2 and here i want to make some kind of ideology that when i want to talk about interstate council or interstate trade and commerce or finance commission some sources in online and offline they, they will say that finance commission or the interstate trade and commerce is an indian innovation in that manner they will mention but in practicality the interstate trade and commerce along with the principles of finance commission the way how mr ambedkar wants to take it from australian constitution based on that only the concept regarding financial relations the finance commission or the interstate trade and commerce we borrowed it from australia not into the nature of indian innovation so anything regarding igst integrated gst 246a2 of the indian constitution is clearly saying that parliament is an ultimate authority and there is another provision the way how under article 279a the integrated gst levied and collected by the union government levied and collected by the union government but the money will be appropriated between both union and state so in this way some kind of federal principles we can able to say ig interstate commerce related gst will be levied and collected by the central government and money will be given to both the center and state already right now finance commissions are saying that 14th and 15th finance commissions are saying that 42 percentage shareholding to state and 58 percentage with the central government and various other new committees are saying that at least the next 16th commission recently constituted by the government of india, president of india in 2023 so there may be a possibility the share between center and state finance will go to 50 50 but not at assured but the only reason is the president of india in 23 beginning we have for the idea of 16th finance commission there may be a possibility that 50 
ஓகே ஃபிஃப்டி ஷேர் ஹோல்டிங் ஸோ ஹியர் ஆல்சோ நான் ஒன்லி வாட் மீ கலெக்டிங் இன்டிகிரேட்டட் ஜிஎஸ்டி வில் பி கிவன் டு வில் பி சென்டர் அண்ட் ஸ்டேட் திஸ் இஸ் அ வே எ நியூ சேஞ்ச் இன் டு த நேச்சர் ஆஃப் த ஹோல் ஃபைனான்சியல் ரிலேஷன்ஸ் ஹீ மச் யூ எக்ஸிஸ்ட் திஸ் ஆர் தி ஹைலைட்டிங் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் எ ஸ்டூடெண்ட் நீட் டு கீப் இட் இன் ஹிஸ் மைண்ட் வென் யூ வாண்ட் டு லுக் இன் டு த மேட்டர் ஆஃப் சென்டர் அண்ட் ஸ்டேட் ரிலேஷன்ஷிப் ஆஃப்டர் த இம்பேக்ட் ஆஃப் ஜிஎஸ்டி ஆஃப்டர் த இம்பேக்ட் ஆஃப் ஜிஎஸ்டி வெல் சம் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஜென்ரல் ஐடியா ஜென்ரல் திங்ஸ் பீப்புள் வில் சே There are some two important commissions in the name of Sarkaria Commission and Funshi Commission. First commission regarding Central and State Finance, uh, Central and State Relationship, Sarkaria Commission. Second commission regarding Central and State Funshi Commission. So the Sarkaria Commission also made some recommendations regarding financial relations between food, financial relations between Central and State. For the, they said that agriculture income should be come under the category of tax basis for it. and there should be an amendment related to the net proceeds of cooperative taxes may be made charitable with the state right now it is not but in future there may be an amendment as per the sarkaria commission recommendation and there should be a surcharge on income tax should not be levied by the union government except that there is a extraordinary specific purpose then you can go for surcharges other than that in income tax matter central government should not put any kind of surcharges this is an idea and the most important thing this commission also emphasized for the decentralization of planning process now the planning commission got removed and financial commission on the basis of the ideas of central state relationship the expenditure and non expenditure was it together so now almost the decentralization process was was somewhat achieved in the country and the second important committee in the name of punshi and punshi commission when we talk about the financial relationship between central and state they also very specifically say that into the nature of fiscal federalism into the nature of central and state relationship the recommendation of punshi is very clear that every people who those are involving into central and state stakeholders and their recommendations are very very necessary in order to strengthen the mechanism of a very good fiscal relation between central and state on the basis of that this committee of the punshi second central state committee also emphasized with the importance of the strengthening the constitutional schemes of fiscal transfer through financing and reduce the scope of other devaluation process and all those things now we know very well now there is no planning commission and this recommendation of and the most important thing the finance commission should be permanent body now we are acting on the basis of the executive authority of the president of india for every round the five years can you know, he will make some kind of finance commission chairman 14th 15th 16th very recently 16th constitution it may reduce into three years also two years also four years also but there is no uniformity inside our country so like australia where we borrowed the interested payment accounts and finance commission they are having annual financial commission only an annual standing financial commission only a do kind of thing but in india we are planning as per the central state relation committee like punshi commission very clearly recommended that there should be a permanent body with the five years and all this very very necessary and other various things regarding finance commission and all we will show you in heavily we can able to discuss in coming class but the most important thing i need to discuss when we want to discuss about the matters regarding central state there may be a possibility upsc may discuss the upsc may ask this question because impact of central and state relations on the basis of gst was already asked by upsc but in future there may be a possibility how the way the impact of covid 2019 and the federal principle that inside the class i can able to elaborate this idea but still as a overall view just i want to provide because since it is a demo class so i need to be limit myself into the nature based on that i am just introducing the topic like federation or federal principle and impact of covid under article 256 and 257 on the basis of that the way how the sarma transport versus union of india case the supreme court may made some kind of decision and otherwise we can able to say the j engineering was limited and the popular you know say gora case uh, opinion by uh, the high court of calcutta and all on the basis of that the way how the concept regarding 256 and 365 and 356 can be used against the principles of sr mumbai case verdict uh, and all can uh, these are the future possibility 
we can able to say in classes we can able to discuss elaborately about this particular idea of self-assessed relations impact upon um, GST sorry GST we had done it and the concept regarding COVID and the federal principle we will discuss in future. Okay. Thank you all.